we shall continue with our London tournament and the quarterfinals. So the tournament we just shown games and the blunders of the players, but the tournament was basically 16 players into four groups, four players in each group, double round. Each one play each one two times. Soccer system, three points for a win. Absolutely no surprise, not even one. All the favorites qualified, I would even say quite convincingly, quite clearly. Uh, um, Anand and Kramnik, Adams and Swidler, Kawana, Gelfand and Nakamura and Short. And pretty much other than Short, which again, okay, he's not a weak player, but he's less than 2700, you know, if you want to put it. All others are really 2750 or above. So pretty much like many top 10 in the world, right? Who are top 10 in that list? Nakamura top 10, Kawana top 10, Gelfand top 10, Kramnik top 10, Anand top 10, Swidler and Adams probably 10, 11, 12, 13, and short, well, probably around 50, 27, tiny less than 2700 would make it to about number 50. So really you have out of the top 15 in the world, seven players and out of the top 10, five. Okay, quite a strong tournament. You know, I, once again, I would like to show quite many games. So, not putting too much emphasis on the opening, all I can say is another game that we see, this G3 line against D6 is becoming more, more and more popular. Okay, I want to go a bit quickly in the opening, don't care so much about it. All right, I quite, li I quite like white here actually. I mean, the e5 pawn is gone, but so does the d4 pawn, and look at the differences. Take, knight b3, take. Okay, this pawn cannot be protected, and just very nice advantage for white. I mean, this, this is where you see like a really great players. Like, there is no rush to take the d4 pawn. There is no castle because of the h6 pawn. And okay, I don't know why I had, had to click on the g4 square, but it just happened. So king f8, okay, take. I mean, something like this is maybe not that great. Okay, big, big trouble for black here. I mean, just positionally. Why a5? Because if knight c5, well, the pawn is out there and I mean, first of all, the pawn. So he's trying to stop white from, you know, gaining more space on that side. Okay, rook to the open files, getting the rook. Bottom line, black got really bad out of the opening and lost the pawn. Okay, he's not dead, but he just lost this pawn. Okay, here, left, right, doesn't matter. W probably Adams could have played better than he actually did. They got this position, and Adams, well, of course exchanging pawns, exchanging pawns is always the right strategy, almost always, for the one with the pawn down. And exchanging pieces is the right strategy for the one with the pawn up, right? Bl Black wants to get into an endgame when white has just one pawn, not five against four. One pawn, that's a draw. White wants to get to an endgame, no pieces, five against four with the pawns and just winning a pawn endgame. So we can understand the logic of that. But okay, tiny bit tricking him. Yeah, I, I guess this is not very promising for black at all. It's probably easily lost this way. So he has to get activity and okay, this rook endgame, if I knew how to play this rook endgame, I would play rook endgames. But okay, uh, of course, of course, not a pleasant endgame to play. I mean, white king is coming to the beef pawn. I mean, the computer actually doesn't say it's huge advantage, but more importantly, okay, so here is really a great idea that if king c3, then he's going to take, and until then, he wants to push the pawns. 
so that he will be left with one pawn on f4. And when white rooks may be moving, he can maybe grab the f2 pawn. So he played unbelievable. I mean, you know, five minutes, five minutes on the clock, he played this interesting move. And what should white play here? Big surprise, rookie four, right? With handle, that's what I'm thinking, right? I mean, they 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 are going to. It will be a queen endgame, but white is the only one that's going to have a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly, I mean, I like it the way that you said, like, yeah, rookie four, like, okay, Adams to thought for. Well, immediately, <laughs> and what's that, right? I mean, I said this was a <coughs> tournament of blunders, blunders. No, this is amazing. I mean, some of those, wow. I mean, may maybe he would have lost the rook endgame anyway, but, ser <laughs> but seriously, I mean, that, that, make it, that make it no game at all. I mean, that makes it no game at all. The winner of the tournament really didn't blunder. Oh, I don't want to leave ICC. I just want to close this tiny window. Nakamura really didn't blunder. I mean, Okay, may maybe at some points he didn't play best, but all in all, no, not blundering, won him, just won him the tournament. Amazing. I mean, his game against Short was actually a one that there were tiny bit inaccuracies. L let's go quickly to the moment. I mean, there's actually quite a reasonable amount that can be studied. Tiny less from the opening, maybe more from the rest of the game. Okay, so it, it is not the first time in short career that he has played the close Sicilian. I mean, he has played this against Kasparov long, long ago, and short is... N in the match against Kasparov, he played heavily theory, but other than that, many of the British players want to steer away from theory, just to rely on pure chess, and they play close Sicilian, they play many of the lower Grandmaster other sidelines against Sicilian. Okay, we will not discuss much the opening, just very, very logical play. Very logical play. Exchanging Black's mighty bishop is also logical, okay, Black is taking and going this way. This is sometimes an idea by Black. Knight g8, he, he may be thinking in some moment. Okay, I thought white, by the way, could have played f4, but not crucial. Okay, of course, he's not going to allow this thing. This he would, he doesn't want to allow. Okay, d5, he has to break in the center. But okay, oops, that was a little bit too fast. Okay, let's. Okay. Okay, threatening the rook against the queen. Okay, and here Ikaro Kaina may sacrifice the pawn, but really targeting this one and the fact that the bishop on g2 right now is big time blocked. Yes, Julian, question? Queen d4. I think maybe if queen d4, f4, or rook e4 is also a possibility. Okay, that's a decent question. Okay, let me go here. I want to get some active play, but I mean, I wonder if there's a better move. No, F4 is the best move, so we even we even suggested a decent idea. I mean, immediately, look, as a principle, you cannot play with a bishop like that. By the way, this is what cost short the game, that he played 
too fast something. But it's, it's kind of, I don't know, when I look at this position with the bishop on g2, doesn't look very pretty. What's the evaluation? About equal here. After queen d4, f4, white's better. This was played, now queen d4. Okay, not huge difference. Take, knight take. So, it's not about counting the pawns. It's about how dangerous is this pawn. And the king is weak. The king is weak because the second rank is open. Take. But take is a big mistake. Like, take is a big blunder. Actually, no. Take is not yet a big blunder. Take is all right. A4. What is black's threat, obviously? What is black's threat here? Black has some, some threat in this position. But you can, but if you play a3, I'm gonna take it. Knight takes c2. Okay, so what happens? What happens if, if I move the rook, check, right? Agree. So maybe why white needs to play rook a3. Maybe white needs to play rook e3. The thing that is a bit scary about rook e3 is this. <sighs> Such a king. And okay, actually computer saying after rook e1, black is all right, white is all right, black is all right, everyone's all right. But it's kind of unpleasant to look at something like this and this knight there is so strong. I mean, just practically, we are humans. Okay, you look at computer evaluation, it says black's okay, white's okay. Okay, it's okay, but practically, it's really, really, really unpleasant for white. At least looks practically very easy for black, although it's about equal. Shaw played a very logical move. F4. But this is losing the game. And actually, here maybe Ikaro played the blunder, maybe. No, not clear, but maybe play the blunder here. Okay, this is a cool move. Which Ikaro played immediately. I, I th well, let's see how, well, he actually thought for a long time, oh, mama mia. I mean, he thought about it for three and a half minutes, but you know, that's actually really amazing th what he overlooked then, I think. Yes, Julian. You are way better than Ikaro. Next time you will be here, I will tell him. You see this kid? <laughs> he suggested F6, which is the best move by far, because it's totally winning. Why? The rook cannot move freely because of knight e2. So the rook moves here, but now... <sighs> no chances for survival. No, I mean this, with the rook on the se two rooks and rook on the seventh rank like this, okay, black is gonna win. Like, very good, Julian. Excellent job. No, this is excellent job, because knight b5 is tempting, but f6, but now, what should white play here? Here, actually, I was looking at the game, and I was thinking that, okay, I've seen how the game went and why white lost. Then I was thinking by myself, you know, white should have maybe played this move. And which move is that? Any thoughts? Just... No, this is gone. Julian, what's that? What's that? No, you stop thinking like that. What's that? And I put here and you resign. No, come on, that was not right. No, but, 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 but it's just gonna move. No, just move the, no, the problem for white is gonna be his king. 
why should bring his king immediately? Immediately to hold the c2 pawn and be some in some versions part of defending here. Immediately bring the king. It's an end game. It's an end game. Instead, okay, before we had seen a version that black has both of the the black has the rook here and the pawn here. We had seen a much, much, much better version for black before. Much better version for black, but this is really bad. Okay, exchanging, <coughs> but here is the problem. He's going to lose this pawn. We are not here to analyze this endgame super duper deeply, but I will just tell you the principle. He's going to lose this pawn as well, because he's going to run into some zungzwangs, which he did. Yeah, bishop h1, I think there's some check and k rook c2. Didn't analyze it much. It's losing. That's what some knowledgeable people thinking. But still it was probably better than the move c7. Now, I, I mean he had to play bishop g2 or something. Maybe still lost, but this position is lost. But if those two pawns are gone, this position is draw. This position is a theoretical draw if those two pawns are gone. Just want to be certain about it. I think so. Because it's a rook pawn and the bishop becomes a pawn? No, beca because the king cannot cross. I mean, maybe if the pawn is not on h5, it's... It should be a draw, I'm pretty certain. But with the F pawns, with the F pawn, actually I wonder if the pawn on H7, but I also think it should be a draw. But with the pawn on, but not 100% certain, but with the pawns on F, with the F pawns on the board, totally winning, exactly the way that Nakamura won the game. No, no, no doubts there. So this why White had to keep the C pawn, because here it's just over on the spot, look. This is the difference. This is the difference. And f4 is there. Without the f-pawn, it's a draw. That, that, this is the difference. Resign. Yeah. Without, without the f pawn, it was a fortress, but Hikaru obviously knew exactly to which endgame he wanted to go. Only thing I think that he had a real big blunder in that tournament was f6 that our Julian suggested, and then obviously didn't suggest very smart thing after it. But, yeah, so this, this, this was Hikaru's part of not, not winning on the spot. This would be the match, right? World champions, the princess, Kasparov, and then Kramnik, Anand, and all those. Ah, you know, Anand is already gone pretty much, and Kramnik, I've, I, I've said that I think practically Nakamura is player number two in the world, okay. Uh, Aronian, no, Aronian is also really strong, but, but maybe two and maybe combined, but I think that Kramnik is also, no, I, I don't think, I mean, okay, it will be interesting in the candidates, but I mean, I don't think that is Kramnik that we knew. Okay. E6. Okay, so they're playing very solid. Tiny bit surprising. I mean, you, you might expect some queen's gambit ex decline, but okay. Not, not wanting any part, maybe with the Tarash. Poss probably Kramnik would have taken with the knight. This is popular these days. Okay, so they got a normal, typical, simple, solid position. I mean, ta take take is not that impressive. Of course, you cannot take, right? Because take, take, and discover, check. But in general, you know, isolated pawn, yes, but bishop out, rook here, black gets a lot of play for this, for this weak pawn. Like, I mean, 
Isolated pond, nothing is wrong with that as long as you have things around it that work for you. Okay. By the way, look at this position. Does anyone know from this structure, where do we get it from? Any ideas? This is a structure that we will get from this opening. Queen's Gambit accepted. Sorry. Without without exchanging, let's say. And so on. Actually, we are getting very, very, very similar positions. Bishop b2 and knight c3. From Queen's Gambit accepted, getting similar l positions. Okay, so it's not very different world. Knight e4 is a super logical move in those positions. Okay, obviously he's hitting the knight on f6. And after take, take, this is his big idea, right? The knight is hanging and h7 is hanging. f5 is not working. Something like temporarily sacrifice, ju ju just because white has this move and black is not going to get the piece or going to give some material for that. So Kravnik played the best move, and very smartly, rook c8. His idea is that if white take, which white should have taken. Okay, now the discovered threat is really big, and the bishop is tiny in trouble. And after queen b1, you're going to tell me what black should play. This is going to be your part to tell me. Well, g6 is tiny illegal, because the king is here. f5 is possible. f5 is not a bad one. Maybe bishop g6, but f5 is possibility. But bishop takes before I'm going to take. I mean, OK, you can give pieces because it's free analysis, but take, take, and king e2, and then what? OK, queen takes. Oh. Bishop takes before take, king takes d1, okay? So you want to take, okay, I mean, you're right. Take, 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 I take. Yeah, maybe this, I mean, it, it looks tiny bit messy. Uh, maybe I will just clear the king away, but Maybe now f5, bishop, the bishop, the bishop, the bishop. Maybe I will play this. Yeah, I mean, this this can be tiny complicated. Let's see what computers like white after king e2, yeah. I mean, it's complicated, but just instinctively let me move the king away. But OK, it's messy, but looks like in white's favor. Messy, but in white's favor. OK. But which other idea, other than like immediately giving away like that material? Well, e5. I mean, just attacking the pawn chain. And if this take and take, I mean, something like this. I mean, Black is going to win that pawn over there. So at least he's equal. But look what happened in the game. Very excellent move. So now take, take, just pair of bishops. So the same thing happened in the game, only that black didn't even get a pawn. Nothing. Nothing. <coughs> it took knight c4. Like, OK, all black pieces are at maximum play. 
I mean, we can start thinking about some ideas like that at some point. Okay, still F4 is there, but some ideas on the king side at least. And then retreat, and how should we play now for black? Very, very strong continuation. This move, just lost, for pretty much lost. I mean, he has to go back, but actually he cannot go back already, I'm sorry, because of, you tell me, why he cannot go back? Actually, bishop e2 is just losing completely. First take here and then take. You don't want to win a pawn. You want to first take the heavy, pi the big pieces, and then force him into that position. Okay. And now rook c2 is not winning immediately because take. But before, resign. He's either going to get a pass a pawn with pair of bishops, like amazing, or just rook c2. And no, the rook is not trapped there. It is actually white that is resigning here. Just totally resigning here for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not one of the most impressive games ever. Right? I mean, if g3, just bishop take g3, checkmate. If h3, I think I can, we can go here, here, I don't know. Like, don't, don't try this, like, okay, here. Check. There are many other ways. Yes, Julian. Which move? In what position? Here? No, uh, yeah, here instead of knight c4. Yeah, I mean, I'm not certain why is it so incredible. I mean, okay, it's okay. There will be f4 to block the diagonal. So, I mean, I if you don't have checkmate there, you don't have checkmate there. Yeah, well, why, why, why would it be working? I mean, it's just some idea in some versions to keep in our head, but immediately I don't think it's really that powerful. Yeah, but you know, you, you, you're really, really too slow here. For example, you know what I'll be thinking immediately? I want to take. I mean, le le let's see who is attacking who. With this king, with this, with this. I don't think that you really enjoy it, gonna enjoy this position. You know, let's see what computers say. Yeah, you're, fi you're fighting to survive here. No, you don't want to stick your pieces o over there. But it's an idea. It's something that is aimed towards that direction. But amazing, you know, and I was just telling, so this is the player that was supposed to beat Carlsen. No, okay, I mean, he's great. He deserves all the respect, but I think that the chess world is, uh, is a more correct spot with a different world champion. All right, now, Adam Swidler, we've seen, we've seen one big blunder. There were, you know, Swidler had another one, you know? Adam Swidler won with the white pieces, a fighting game against Adams. Adams, I think, tiny blunder there, I'm not certain. But then they got into this one. Very solid Sicilian, okay, those are the types that Adams play. Very rarely he goes into the heavy, complicated theoretical line. It's not his style. This is his style. And this is what he does so amazingly well for 20 years. Okay, it's like playing like it is some Ray Lopez. Going to play positional, exchange this knight, play for this square. Like, funny positional play. <laughs> yeah, it's like some Spanish Ray Lopez variation. Okay, queen c6, queen d3. What do you think about this move by Black? By the way, the players thought like forever here. Okay, but this is a tiebreak, sorry. Not game 25. 
So they, they played re reasonably actually fast. It was not game 25. But what do you think about knight c5 by Svidler? Played super quickly. Look, he thought, I don't know, okay, he's getting increment, but still, he thought quite quickly here. It's a blunder. I know it's a blunder. I want to hear why. Knight takes f6. Knight takes f6. Of course. Unbelievable. If bishop take d6 falling. If pawn take. That was actually better. But now strategically. Take. Take. Wait before you jump there. Play this first. God forbid don't take. <sighs> you don't want to allow your opponent to cover this square. But just move. And I mean okay. For example strategically. This is beyond unbelievable for black. <laughs> I mean, the bishop on e7 is less than a pawn. Less than a pawn. So white will put his bishop here and then put some more pressure on the light squares. That's ridiculous for black. But probably still yet to go, went go this way. Like, Svidler just bye-bye pawn. Very good move. Bishop g4. Okay, uh, Adams won this one pretty much without any effort. F3, look, no weaknesses, nothing how Mickey playing. And alrighty, pretty much Svidler had enough. If take, take, the pawn is just so going to be so strong. If this move, just take, and if exchange rooks, the pawn is pretty much unstoppable. Svidler had enough. Now, the next game, the next game, Swidler played, you know, very bizarre, very, very bizarre. And what, what did we say when the opponent is playing extremely bizarre, throwing the pieces different directions, the pawn different directions, we are going to be continuing our principles, development, space, Look at this. Swidler got lost position with white on move 10. It's unbelievable. Move 10. No blunders, but look. OK. Catalan opening. How is it possible to get blunder, to lose this on move 10? OK, d4 is, of course, the main move. We have seen, actually, the game of Howell against Caruana with b3, c5 before. But look, what is that? c5 and after knight c6 what is white doing pushing pawns alone and moving the queen and black is just what's that <laughs> look at black center development open bishop i mean maybe just desperation you know but amazing e4 so that's it just going to win this pawn d3 is another idea for example if f4 bishop is six followed by d3 okay this pawn is gone knight knight d3 yeah resign <laughs> amazing i mean like no just it's either either blunders or people went tiny insane okay and Svidler is not one of those players that is fooling around too much. Like if he thinks the position is just, it, just that's it, okay, he doesn't need to torture himself. Like many players wouldn't resign here correctly, not correctly, but Svidler understands. I mean, all his career, he was quite early to resign, not fooling around. All right, well, yes? What was the idea behind that early C5? Confuse whoever, mainly himself. Yes. Confuse whoever, mainly himself. Now, Caruana played against Gelfand, and Caruana can only 
only complain to himself. You know, they say in soccer, right, if you don't score when you should, or like when you never, then you get to be on the other side. One game, Kawana didn't win a position that he was plus five. He was plus five in this game, and then blundered immediately after. I mean, let, 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 let's just go and see the position that is unimaginable he didn't win. By the way, somewhat similar to our game, right? I mean, okay, yeah, same, same, uh, same ver tiny same version. Okay, we uh, won't discuss the opening only that Gelfand played g5. But I mean, it's not, not all of them, maybe 96 better, but was very generous here. I don't know, I would play bishop f5, or I think I play bishop f5. I mean, I obviously, I don't understand enough why to give a pawn. Why to give a pawn? Don't know. <laughs> but I won. <laughs> but, yeah. But why, why? Okay. Let's put it this way. I mean, you can believe me, you cannot. This is beyond resigning. I mean, if we put computer here, okay, four minutes, four <laughs> minutes, but, and I know, I know, I know it's a bit not nice why to put computer. It's more than plus five. I think it's plus five, plus six or whatever. I mean, and, and okay, those are best, best, best players in the world. So yes, we are not gonna be smart here, you know, putting computer and saying, hey, how come you didn't see that? But queen d8 is the more logical move. Queen d8 is actually the more logical move in the position. And actually with some idea, I'll just show you one pretty idea. Up, 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 you don't need to see that. How to win here? I mean, okay, so we took a pawn, everything is weak on the dark squares. How to win here? No, you have something. I mean, of course it's winning. Everything is winning. <laughs> but you have something that... Of course it's winning, but you have something that... <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> no, you want to play this. And then checkmate him. There were many, many other wins. Incredible that Kawan, I mean, Bishop C3 going on the long diagonal. I mean, just endless amount of wins. But Kawana didn't win this. I mean, with more time on the clock, I almost was fighting for a draw soon. Just crazy. And draw. So when you don't win such position, well, then, that's more than amazing, actually, this. Okay, then, all right, all right. Main line, Nimzo. I mean, okay, obviously, <laughs> Gelfand always, always, you know, that's great about him, always playing principal lines. He can play blitz with you at 10 at night in the club if he's here, and he will play like the same way that he would play a match against Karpov. He, he, he plays principal serious chess. Never seen him playing bizarre chess, B4, no, always main opening, main lines, very, very principal chess, and that's great, you know, it's like, it's very easy to play. And been working for him, you know, being one of the top players in the world for almost quarter a century, and really at the peak of his play, it's unbelievable, like just bravo for him. Anyway, for Caruana, a bit less. I will tell you this, the computers say take, take, and queen d4 is equal. I mean, pass pawn, but great blockade, and the knight is incredible on d5, and f4 is weak. Kawana, okay, no less than a minute, but 
still, 10 seconds increment is a lot, a lot of time. I mean, Kawana played rook d2. Yeah, maybe, maybe he overlooked queen d4 because if take, 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 knight will be on d2 and rook d8, it's just a much better version for black than before. But you know that, yes, what? What to do? Fork. Fork. Well, when you're 2782, I think that's Kawana's rating. You're supposed to see that even when you have a minute. Okay, you know, you still get 10 seconds increment. That's a lot, really a lot. It means that every 10 moves, 12 moves, you get two minutes. It's not really blitz. It's not a bullet when you have a minute with that increment. Yeah. Okay, nothing to see here. Rook d8 just to exchange one pair of rooks immediately. Automatically, you want to get rid of it. Unbelievable. So you don't win a position that is plus or whatever, you know, almost checkmating. Then you blunder like this. Kawana can only look at himself. The most amazing game beyond imagination. Beyond, beyond, beyond imagination. I mean, seriously. This, I said, I don't think I've seen something like that. I mean, Yes, I've seen players like, you know, like completely winning, missing a tactic, a big tactic. But what happened here and to the player that it happened? Wow. Let's go quickly. Basically, maybe same version that he would play against Anand, you know, the knight take d5 that I mentioned. Okay, I mean, Kramnik actually... It looks like, when I've seen this position, I thought it's a Grunfeld, but it's not. Anyway, played here. Nice tactic by Kramnik. I mean, okay, if take is just getting the pair of bishops and he's happy here. Nakamura played interesting, sacrificed the exchange to trap the knight, not trapping the knight. Okay. So he thinks he has counterplay, but he doesn't have enough counterplay. I mean, he's worse. Anyway, le le let's look. Kramnik played very well here, more left. Managed to win the pawn. Okay, this technically, of course, should be winning. And I mean, even quite easy, I would, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm quite, quite unbelievable. Yeah, I think in this position, for example, the move bishop f8 just finishes the game on the spot. Is it here? Let me just... I mean, bishop f8... Actually, it was maybe even here stronger. I mean, how come? I mean, okay, you can't take like this because of... This is maybe a draw. Just not many pawns. Remember, if you're defending, you want to exchange pawns. In this, probably white is gonna, yeah, white is just exchanging, will exchange black last pawn. And if you're gonna play this move, okay, you're also probably not gonna win this one. Bishop three pawns, rook two pawns one side. But you cannot take with the rook because of bishop f8, because of knight c5. But dude, you have three minutes. If you play this move, like, that's quite a lot, right? Bishop e3. And if you can't win this, then Kramnik should only look, Kramnik should only, only, only look at himself. I mean, th 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 this is just unbelievable. But okay, look, Nakamura found miracle defense, absolutely miracle. That's it, now it's a draw. Believe it or not, it's a draw. I mean, maybe, maybe Kramnik just overlooked this. Or maybe overlook this idea. This move. Magic. Black has no access to this square. The king has no access. He can never take because of d8. <laughs> Incredible. This is draw. Now, 
would you believe that black lost this? Like, how can black lose this? I mean, this is beyond insane. Beyond, I mean, like, like just, just no words. Okay, it's a draw, it's a draw, what to do? I mean, and, and Kramnik is with more time. Yeah, and just went crazy. Look at what he overlooked. No, okay, he should go uh, open a chess book and start doing puzzles. I mean, that's just crazy. Still, it has to be a draw at some point, but now it's already lost, I think. No, actually, this, this I don't know. It's, it's unpleasant, but, no, what is that? I mean, are you joking? No, like, he, he, he did, he, 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 he seen tactics like an absolute beginner. Like, uh, absolute beginner, like in the quad here, like lower section, see tactics like better than folks. I mean, that's insane. I mean, King F6, he played in two seconds. I mean, he didn't see, no, it was like completely Rook E7, two seconds. No, okay, I mean, uh, you, you have, just amazing. I guess he was too frustrated. No, okay, I, I said Nakamura won. He didn't really blunder, but it doesn't mean that he played great chess, because he didn't play great. He didn't really play amazing chess there. He just didn't blunder. The final well, was actually just distant chess, more or less, you know? Like, nothing dramatic. Gerfan came well prepared with some Grunfeld lines. Sacrifice exchange, very interesting. Computers say compensation for white all the way. Actually, at, at some point, okay, Computer say maybe knight to e6 is a better move. Actually, computer, I, I checked tiny bit. Houdini says tiny better for black. But bottom line, and I wrote it for also the blog, Nakamura just played decent moves one after the other. And you know what? Who is the proof of burden in this position? Black gave material. Black is in constant pressure to prove that he has something. Because when white managed to completely develop, and get all right. And this, I think, was a blunder. What he overlooked is that there's rook d7. He thought he's getting back the material. He just blundered. And, you know, Nakamura took this one one way and just won it without any, F without any big difficulties. The other, the other game, I mean, just no, he's just creating no weaknesses, exchanging some pieces. And just that's it. Resign. So, oh, just exchanging. If this move, I believe, is going to play queen e2 and then take. The other game was, well, the next game was quite complicated. But at no point was the Karo much worse. It, there was some point that it looked like he was worse. Overall, you know, a great victory. Very important one. I wouldn't say impressive tournament, but it doesn't matter. All you have to do is uh, get the point, right? So, don't blunder. Mm -hmm.